Thank you very much for hosting this seminar and <laughs> thanks, thanks very much for inviting me as well. So, so this, is, this talk is about, as it says, entropy inequalities of sums in prime cyclic group. And this is a joint work with uh, Liao Wang and Mokshe Madiman. So, okay. So the main motivation is actually from the information theory. So I try to briefly introduce uh, the entropy power inequality first. So, so what is entropy power inequality? So entropy power inequality in our n values, so real vector valued random variable case, uh, was first suggested by the Shannon and proved by the STEM. So it's about the entropy power is super additive with respect to independent random variables. So, so what is entropy power? So entropy power is defined in this way. So, so some constant times exponential uh, of 2 over n times h of x. So what is h of x? h of x is uh, entropy. So this is called differential entropy. So for the continuous random variable case, it's called the differential entropy. And and I will introduce this one later, but for the discrete case, it's called Shannon entropy. So, so there's something different terms. But so for the dis di differential entropy, entropy power dif is defined in this way. And and what what it means? What it means? So I will just tell you briefly. So for the Gaussian random variable, Gaussian mu and sigma square. So differential entropy is half times log 2 phi e sigma square. So this is the uh, entropy of the Gaussian and and the differential, I mean entropy is look, uh, translation invariant so, so mu does not involve, is not involved in this entropy term. So, so if you plug in this one to the entropy power then you actually get sigma square. So, so if you have if you have two two independent Gaussians, that means sigma one square plus sigma two square is greater than or equal to sigma one square plus sigma two square. So, so so Gaussian is some some sense is optimal case, and and then so this so so as you as we can see the sigma square is like some 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 sort of fluctuation of random variable. So. So that kind of fluctuation, when we do some independent, when we do independent sum, then uh, it's like a, the behavior is like a super additive. So, so that's I want to mention about this entropy power inequality, and 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 also this entropy power inequality is very useful in information theory uh, when we try to prove some some coding theorems or when we when we compute some capacity of uh, some Gaussian channel. So, so when we analyze some, some channel in information theory and when we want to compute some mutual information in that channel, then entropy power inequality is, is very important. I mean, it's, it's very useful. So, so in information theory, this inequality anyway is very important. And that's why I want to study in this, in this case as well. Okay, so, so yeah, this is entropy power inequality. Then, I mean, then we can, from this, we can also find some equivalent formulation as a lower bound formulation. So what it means is that uh, uh, differential entropy of H x plus y is always greater than or equal to differential entropy of some Gaussian plus Gaussian. So, so as, as I said, the Gaussian is the optimal case. In this case, the lower bound case is actually the Gaussian with uh, with the same entropy of x and same entropy of y, so so we can always find. I mean, you, you can always find some. If you change the sigma square, you can always find some real value corresponding to the same entropy of x and y. Okay, so so we can. I mean, it can be proved that they are equivalent, and also. There's some weak formulation as well. So weak formulation, what I mean by here is x and y are, can be independent, but in this case, x and x primes are IID. So they should be 
uh, they should be iid random variable and then uh, entropy of x plus x prime minus entropy of x is always greater than or equal to half log 2. So that means if I if we do the some convolution or independent sum for the same random variable then the entropy gap between the sum and the original random variable should be always greater than or equal to some constant. So that constant is half times log 2. So, so that in this case, the optimal case is also achieved by the Gaussian case as well. So, so this continuous case, entropy power inequality related things are very, very well studied. Okay. Okay. And also, um, uh, for the entropy power inequality, uh, we can say that the, that inequality is strongly resemble to the broom minkowski inequality. So what is the broom minkowski inequality? So broom minkowski inequality is, is about the sum set inequality for the volume. So if we have a two Borel measurable sets, A and B, then the, I mean, the, this absolute value means the volume. So volume of A plus B exponent one over N. So it's like a normalized volume is greater than or equal to the normalized volume of the set A plus normalized volume of the set B. So the, then the point is the normalized volume of some set is super additive. So it's just like the entropy power, the behavior is the same. And this kind of similarity was noted by the Kostein cover. The both are the information theorists. So maybe if you're familiar with the inf information theory, the Thomas cover has a book about the information theory. So, so they, they actually showed some similarity between the broom minkowski inequality and entropy power inequality. So, so in, in this talk, uh, the main question is what, what we can say about the discrete case. So, so that's why I want to say, I mean, I want to mention this talk as a discrete method. <laughs> so, so anyway, so something like a broom minkowski inequality uh, for the discrete case, we can also say something similar, some set inequality. So, so for the general prime cyclic group, there's a inequality is called uh, cauchy davenport inequality, but this is more simple case. Simple case is for the integer domain. Then the size of a plus b, so a plus a and b's are some subset of integer. So just think about some finite set. Uh, and with having values and integers. Then the uh, a plus b means, uh, yeah, I didn't mention the plus uh, operation, but hopefully you, you guys know about it. It's just sum of each element. So, so in this case as well, so the size of uh, a plus b is always greater than or equal to the size of a plus size of b minus one. So we need minus one more. So if you look at the proof of the broom minkowski inequality, then we are doing some translation of a set A and B, and the optimal case is like a matching the endpoints together. So for the Lebesgue measure sense, even though they have the same uh, endpoint, but the one point is measure zero, but, but for this discrete case, uh, counting measure should count, we have to, using the counting measure, we have to count one set, so one point set, so that's why we have to do something like a minus one. So, so anyway, so we have very similar discrete sum set inequality in the integer case as well. And this is sharp in, in the sense that uh, if A and B are just single point set, then as you can see, A plus B is just A plus B. So one point set as well. So here's a one, 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 so we have to do minus one. So that, in that way we have a uh, equality. So this is sharp inequality, okay? Okay, so, so the question is, uh, we want to find some, something discrete entropy power inequality or the lower bound of the entropy of sum. So here's the, some re review of the literature done so far. So, 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 so here's the uh, work by the Hermos and Vignat. Uh, they proved some entropy power, discrete entropy power inequality for binomial families. So in this case, 
they have binomial just half. So it's just uniform on the two sets. In that case, entropy power inequality is satisfied. I mean, the same form of the entropy power. And entropy power, in this case, for the discrete case, is defined exponents, exponents uh, two times hx. So, so if we define that way, then this, the same form is true. And also, uh, Sharma, Das, Mush, Krishnan, they also proved that uh, for the general P, and then uh, M and N, so size should be large enough, then, uh, then this kind of, um, this, this is the same type of entropy power inequality is also true. But, but M and N should depend on P, uh, P. In this case, M and Ns are just for any M and M, so it can start from one, two, and anything's fine. But, but in this case, it should depend on P. So anyway, they have some result in this direction. And also, for the weak formulation sense, uh, Trans Tao, he proved that uh, some asymptotically sharp results. So in this case, because of the weak formulation, so we, we are looking at some entropy gap. So H of X plus X prime minus H of X, so entropy gap with respect to the sum, is always greater than or equal to half log two. For the, uh, this constant is the same as a continuous case, but we need some correction term for, so that's, yeah, so, so when we work this kind of problem, because of some correction term, it makes the problem more difficult, so. so but anyway, in this case, the trans tau, he proved that uh, if we do the h of x tends to infinite, that means entropy goes to infinite, then uh, this lower bound is converged, I mean, lower bound converged to the half log two, so. Okay, so that's his result, and also some information theorists, the uh, Hagashur, Abed, Halata, they proved that something, I mean, it's not a weak formulation, but, but they proved some, some lower bound, but, but the constant is one over eight as, as entropy goes to infinite. So, so as turns out proved this constant is sharp, so one over eight is loose constant. But they, they prove some, some general uh, type of lower bound in this direction. Okay, so, so that's the previous work. Okay, now I want to introduce the main result, I mean, explain the main result. So to explain our result, I need to introduce some notations. So the main domain in the discrete uh, entropy or some set inequality. Uh, the domain is cyclic group, uh, prime cyclic group. So it's, uh, it's written by the Z mod PZ. So cyclic group is just very simple. It's, it's from zero to P minus one. Everybody knows what it is. But, but um, to, to describe the result more convenient, uh, I want to make the center as zero. So that means I'm just shifting the domain. A, l a little bit, because and p so so p should be greater than or equal to three. So p equal two. There's no center. So I have to work with p should be greater than or equal to three. Then I can always make because p is always odd number. I can make the center as zero, and also I'm just assuming that if p equal infinite, then I'm just saying that it's just integer. So 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 I will describe the result as a z mod pz, but, but it actually includes the infinite case as well. So that means integer case is also included in the result. Okay, but so, I mean, uh, or you can just understand that the result is all just for the, the result is just true for the integer case. Then it's much easier to understand what I mean, okay. So, and then, okay, and then I want to introduce the notion of Rennie entropy. The so Rennie entropy is more general, generalized version of the Shannon entropy. The Shannon entropy is defined as minus sum of pi log pi. So pi is a probability mass function, then it's just sum of minus sum of p log p. In that case, okay, I, I use the f. Yeah, I, I, sorry about the different notation. I will just keep f. 
because p is a prime some sense. So, so if I use the f here, then the Rennie entropy of order r, r is from, from zero to infinite, and we are including zero and infinite both, then the Rennie entropy of f of order r is defined in this way, the sum of fi power r. So it's like a uh, r's norm, and then we are just decorating some constant, take a log and then some constant. And then if we take r goes to 1, we have a, so we, we take a r goes to 1 as a limit, then we can recover the Shannon entropy. And if I take r goes to 0, we have a log of size of the support of the uh, probability mass function f. And if I take r goes to infinite, then, then it can be shown that a minus log of supremum of the fi. So, 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 so the Rennie entropy of, of order zero involves the size of the support, and Rennie entropy of the order infinite involves uh, some maximum, maximum probability of that probability mass function. And one, one case is just the same as Shannon. So in that's... Yeah, the uh, probability mass exists. Yeah, that's, that's that collection of those points uh, where the probability mass exists. Okay. Okay. So that's in that sense, the Rennie entropy is a generalization of Shannon entropy. Is that only in the discrete case? Or is uh, no, no. no. Continuous case, yeah, we also have the same, almost the same notion of Rennie entropy as well. And then it's just a measure on which the density is? Yeah, we can just integrate it. That's it. And then we can s get this almost the same, but but in for the zero zero order case, we have a volume of the support instead of the size, and then yeah that's it. Yeah. And for the infinite case, I guess it's, it was essential supremum of that probability density. Okay, so and convolution, I think you, everybody knows it. So it's about independent sum, but. The, the index sum was involved in, in the uh, plus of the prime cyclic group. So, so it's just, yeah, so I plus J is an addition in the sense of group operation. And, and another notion is I want to use is the modularization. Modularization uh, for, for some probabilist, probabilist uh, Sometimes it's, it's, it's the notion of stochastic ordering. So if we have uh, some x and y random variable, and x has a probability mass f, and y has a probability mass g, then if we want to compare with two random variable, then we can use something like this modularization, or or just we can, I can just say as a so function ordering as a modularization. What it means that f is modularized by b, uh, modularized by g means that for any k, for any k uh, natural number, number, then the largest sum of k number of values in f is always less than or equal to the largest sum of uh, k numbers of values in g. So, so, so what it means that if I want to compare uh, two function f and g, then this means that uh, f1, what I mean by f1 is the largest value of f is always less than or equal to largest value of g and 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 then this is the k equal 1 case and k equal 2 case largest value and second largest value the sum is less than or equal to the largest value of g plus the second largest value in g and etc cetera, etc cetera. so if i guess for any k this kind of inequality is satisfied, then it's called modularization. So, so, so in this case, f is modularized by g. Okay, that's the notion of modularization, and it will be used. So, the convolutions are you assuming that the support is finite, and then p yeah, support is finite. Otherwise, uh, we can extend it, but f but but yeah, at this moment, it's much easier. I mean, to say the support should be finite. Otherwise, yes. Yeah, we can extend it, but but yeah, just it's much easier to assume the support is finite. 
So okay. delta point mass majorizes everything. Yes, that's correct. Yes, yeah. Because this is one, and any any sum should be less than or equal to one. Okay. That, yeah, you're right. Okay. So and then uniform is majorized by anything. Uniform. Uniform is majorized by everything. No, I mean the delta is the delta is the, the I guess. Majorized by anything. Ah, uniform is measured by anything. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, I, I, I don't. This is for fixed P, right? It looks like it says if you. you yeah, because of the linearity of the P, that everything argument is correct, right? Maybe, <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, I don't. It's uniform, right? K element should be as big as the average of the element, average of the function value times k, right? So that's. So this, yeah, well, let's, let's think about the letter anyway, but yeah, I don't know, yes. Okay, so uh, another notion I want to introduce is the rearrangement notion. So. I will introduce two types of rearrangement is a plus and minus rearrangement. So plus rearrangement what I mean by the plus rearrangement is okay so I have a slide actually it's much easier to use this. So if I have a probability mass function f there are four masses so support size is four and then so I want to rearrange uh, I want to rearrange the largest value to zero. I mean, to just move, and then the second largest one to the plus one, and third largest one to minus one, and fourth largest one to plus two, and then like so in this way, so start from zero, plus one, minus one, plus two, minus two, plus three, minus three. So just alternating sign and just rearrange it. Then I can make this probability mass as a almost looking like a symmetric and unimodal. So I just forgot to mention uh, when I introduced the entropy power inequality of the lower bound formulation, just recall that h of x plus y is greater than or equal to h of something zx plus zy. But here's the Gaussian. The, the idea is uh, when I want to find some lower bound of entropy of sum, the Gaussian, the shape is like a symmetric and unimodal. So one idea is that if I do some rearranging, I mean, if I, yeah, if I rearrange probably the masses, something looking like a symmetric and unimodal, something like a Gaussian, that may be the minimizer or the lower bound case. So that's, from that intuition, we want to use some rearrangement idea and then so one notion is plus rearrangement is just starting from zero, plus one, minus one, plus two, minus two, plus three, minus three, et cetera, et cetera. And similarly, uh, the minus rearrangement is start from zero and minus one, plus two, uh, minus one, plus one, minus two, plus two, minus three, plus three, et cetera, et cetera. So, so they are just mirror image each other, like a symmetric, uh, not symmetric, it's just mirror image. and and start from zero and just plus one or in this case. So I, I, yeah, I'm just giving the priority to the right side and this pri giving the priority to the left hand side. So that's the difference between plus and minus rearrangement. And, and what I want to mention here is even though I permute or rearrange the probability masses, the Rennie entropy is still the same because Entropy is just sum of s some function of probability masses. So, so it's just about the sum of each index. So it doesn't matter uh, where actually it is. So, so that's why, so even though if I permute or rearrange some probability masses, the entropy is the same. So, so in this case, uh, in the continuous case, uh, zx and gy having ha have the same entropy of x and y, something like this, entropy is still the same. So the re rearrangement, so yeah. The rearrangements also do not change the majorization property. Do not change the majorization. 
So what you mean by that if f is modularized by g, then you're saying f plus is g plus. Or if you, if you rearrange either. Yeah, I, I, I think, yeah, there's a, yeah, that's true. It doesn't matter. OK, yes. OK. OK, so I introduced plus and minus rearrangement. And the other one is also I want to introduce is triangle regular and square regular case. So what is a triangle regular? Triangle regular means, uh, so, so, so I, so, yeah, triangle regular means if the probability mass or any non-negative function, can, I can say for that as well, but, but the, that function takes the largest value an odd number of times. So the largest value should exist uh, in odd an odd number of times. So just think about the one, one number. So the largest value should exist an odd number of times. And then the other, uh, the other values should exist in pairs. So, so in this way, I can make after the rearrangement, like a plus or minus, the, the, the shape looks like a triangle. That's why we just call it as a triangle regular. And similarly, uh, for any values, if, if the values exist in pairs, then after the rearrangement, it just looks like in this way. So I'm, we just call it as a square regular. So this is some sort of symmetric condition or the regularity conditions. Then, then uh, what we can prove is that for any non-negative function f on z mod p z to some non-negative value, then we can always decompose that function into two parts. So one part is triangle regular, and the other part is square regular. We can always decompose uh, the the function in this way, and and this this decomposition is unique. Uh, in the sense that f triangle and f square, they have the same shape. So, so I will just uh, I, I, I just want to mention a little bit more. So this looks non-trivial because if we have a if we have some some values, even though they have different values, uh, we do not know how to decompose in. In, in this in that way but 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 the way I mean the, once you know how to do it it's very simple actually so if you ha I'm just um, I just want to write uh, describe it as a vertical way uh, yes so so here's the y, I, I1 I2 I3 and then um, the way to do it is just focusing on this gap and this gap. So the gap is this amount and this amount and this amount. So this is the gap. And then I'm giving this, this amount of value to all indices. And I'm giving the second gap to the first and second one and the largest one only to the first index. If I give some values in that way, I can always decompose. I mean, I will, I will give you the explicit example here. So just look at this one. So f has a value. Uh, so this is, it's not like probability mass, but for any non-negative function. So the largest value, 5, at minus 3. And the second largest value, 3, is at 1. And third largest value, 1, at 3. Then I'm just giving this gap, the first gap, to the, the largest index at 3. And the second gap, 2, for the first and second indices. And then the third gap to the for all indices. And then I'm just, uh, I'm just uh, looking at the old size set. I'm just dividing. Yeah, I'm just dividing this one into all size set and even size set. Then I can recover the f triangle and f square. So, so the way is very simple. But, 
but uh, I can say this decomposition is unique in the sense that F square and F square, uh, F triangle and F square have the same shape, same shape. Same shape, what I mean by here is it should have the same uh, ranking order. So, so if I'm, F has a ranking like a ranking order like a I1, I2, I3, then F triangle and F square also have the same order. Otherwise, I, we have some counter example, like the simpler one is like this. So if I have some uh, triangle, uh, triangle regular F, then I can decompose this one into this one, G1, plus G2 is uh, this one, this one. So G2 is this plus this is a square regular and this G1 is a triangle regular. So even though F triangle is triangle regular, but I can decompose it into the triangle regular and square regular case as well. So, so, so for, for the uniqueness, I should put this assumption. So they should have the same shape. Then I can uniquely decompose in this way, decompose the, any non-negative function into two regular parts. And then then uh, we can prove that this is the one of the main result. For any Rennie entropy of order R, then this convolution uh, on the prime cyclic group is lower bounded by something like this. So what I did like, what I did here is I, I'm, I'm decomposing the G as a two regular parts. And then uh, I'm just doing some F plus convolute G, uh, G triangle minus plus F minus star G square plus. So why I have to do this? So that's one reason is that, so one simple, simple. Uh, what do you mean by same shape? Here? Yeah, same shape is like F, this is, just think of what F has in this shape. So shape means the largest one. So shape is like this because I1 is the largest one, I2 is the second, I3 is the third. So, so, so shape looks like this and then, uh, they should have the same shape means F triangle also should have the largest value at I1. So here, something like this. And second largest one should be I2. And third largest one to I3. So this order should be the same as F. And then F, and also F square also has the same this ranking order, then I, I'm just saying that they have the same shape because F, F, uh, F triangle also shape looked like this and F, F square also will have the shape looked like this. So, so that's, I'm just trying to write why they have the same shape. So, so I can write down this definition more mathematically, but, but it's much easier to understand just by wording in this way. So they should have the same shape. Okay. So okay. So so I have to uh, decompose in this way because uh, one one question uh, one question is like this: If I have a s some convolution of entropy, so just think about any I mean Sh Shannon entropy. The question is, what is the minimizer of all choices of the rearrangement. So in this case, I mean, it's like combinatorial problem because I can just choose plus or minus here and choose plus or minus here. Then I can find the minimizer among, in this case, four cases. If we do some, so I can just compare with F plus G plus or F plus star G minus or F minus star G plus and F minus star G minus. So, so maybe, yeah, among those four choices, which one is the lower bound of 
those cases. But uh, when we do some ex some observation, there's no unique way to find the minimizer or lower bound of this case. So, so because yeah, so so there's some count example for each case. So we have to do something more, and then yeah, we are able to, to find some general way, general type of lower bound, uh, given using this decomposition, then we can find some lower bound case. Okay. So, so how, how can we prove that lower bound? So I'm just describe, trying to describe the key steps of proving theorem one. Then, so the main ingre ingredient is using the hardy Dulles and Polyas rearrangement inequality. So, so it highly depends on this inequality, the proof. So, so hardy Dulles and Polya, they proved the rearrangement inequality, something like this, for the integer case. And then 2001, the lab proved that the same type of rearrangement inequality for the prime cyclic group. So that's the why we, how we can extend the inequality to the prime cyclic group. Okay, so, so how's the rearrangement inequality in this case? So if, if we have a three prob probability mass function and if we do the convolute, convolution, and then looking at the value at zero, is always less than or equal to. So, so it's like an alternating of the sign of the rearrangement. So plus minus plus, but we need some regularity assumption for the third argument. So otherwise we don't have any general rearrangement inequality. So F and G are general, but G should be the triangle regular. Then uh, the, the, the value at zero should be maximized, it can be maximized uh, when we do this kind of uh, rearrangement. Okay, so, but yeah, but in this case, R should be triangle regular. So, so triangle regular notion actually was introduced by Hardy, Rydl, and Polya, but there's no inequality involving the square regular case. So, so what we do, what we did yet yeah, is extend this inequality uh, to some some rearrangement inequality involving the trying uh, square regular case as well, so so lemma one I already mentioned, and lemma two is from from the lemma one uh, I can just extend the rearrangement inequality involving the square regular case, but if you do the uh, square regular case if you do the convolution of S so S1 and S2 are tri uh, square regular, then S1 plus star S2 plus will be like a triangle regular. So it's, it's like I'm just doing something a little more than, a little more than the, the, the hardy dirud and poly and left case. So, so it's not very hard to uh, extend the inequality to the uh, square regular case as well. Okay, and then, and then um, using this one, this rearrangement inequ in inequality, I want to generalize. Uh, I want to yeah, imp I want generalize it to the modularization case. But to do it, I have to sacrifice one of the general random uh, one of general non-negative function. So if I just cleverly choose G in some way, then I can translate this inequality into some, so, so this is more general, but some, something like this. So if I sacrifice G, then I can find some, uh, if I sacrifice G, then I can find the modularization in this way. So F star g star r 0 is less than or equal to f plus g minus r plus 0 and then this actually implies that f star r is modularized by f plus star r plus so so if i choose g in a good way then i can find the modularization relation 
for this f and r. But in this case, r should be triangle regular. So similar uh, modularization can be also proved for the triangle regular, uh, square regular case as well. Then if I combine both modularization, I can prove that the modularization for the sum of two decomposition. But it, so here the sum is just functional sum. So it's not a group operation. Yeah, you can see it. And then, and then I have a modularization relation. Then, so one very good property of modularization is that I can apply for any continuous convex function phi with phi zero equals zero. Then the sum of phi of fi, i is a domain, is always less than or equal to sum of phi of gi. And then I can, if I can choose, I choose just phi x as x log x, just like a Shannon, and phi x as a x to the power r for the Rennie, for the general Rennie entropy case. Then, then I can just recover the entropy inequality. So that's the idea to prove the entropy, uh, entropy inequality for the sum. So, so the steps, the summary is like this, so starting from some rearrangement inequality. And if I choose one uh, function cleverly, I can find some modularization relation. And given the modularization, if I use some convex function phi, then I can recover um, the entropy inequality. So that's the, uh, that's the idea of the proof, key idea of proof. And then uh, this actually implies the, this inequality. So here, for any Rennie entropy, the, the result is something like this. So I use the here HR F star G is less than or equal to H of R F star plus G triangle minus plus F minus star G square minus. So if I have this, then this actually implies that if I choose r equals zero, if I choose r equals zero, then I can recover some sum set inequality for the prime cyclic group. So, so this is actually the cosy Davenport inequality. So this is almost the same as discrete sum set inequality, but because of the size of domain, we have to kept, uh, yeah, it should be kept by the P. So this is called cauchy davenport when, when if we just use some, if we just choose some uniform distribution, then we can recover the cauchy davenport But, but yeah, but I want to mention, this is just like a redundant implication because if, because if you look at the lefts, lefts or yeah, lefts rearrangement inequality, it actually used the cauchy davenport inequality. So, so it's just it's cyclic. So, but 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 yeah, we can. We just want to mention that as one. If we choose r equals zero, then it's just this. Okay, okay. So time is almost. But but yeah, and then so this is one part of the story, and the other part. Is I just want to briefly mention another notion of rearrangement. So what, what it means is that uh, what I want yeah what I want to introduce is is called hash rearrangement. So hash rearrangement is just if I have some probability mass function, I'm just squeezing the probability masses. So I'm just I'm not changing the order. I'm just squeezing it. So the the order should be preserved. And also the domain in this case is just integer. So I'm not doing the prime cyclic group. Then the notion I want to introduce is hash log concave, which means that uh, F is hash log concave. That means F hash is log concave. The log concave means in this way. So if we take log, it's a concave function. So log of F hash is concave. Then it's called, uh, then I, I, I'm saying the F is hash log concave. Then uh, we can prove that if F and G are hash log concave, we can also prove something similar, uh, lower bound of entropy of sum, because 
uh, yeah, I will, I will explain very briefly how, how we can do it. But, but one idea is that if we have F and G, even though they are very spread out, then a uh, low concave function actually look like a, almost look like a symmetric unimodal. So that's the, another idea, like uh, mimicking the Gaussian case as well. So in, for the discrete case, uh, if f and g are hash log concave by squeeze it, that's the lower bound case. And this inequality can be proved by using some idea of the spanner theory. So, so if you are familiar with this notion of strongest spanner, but yeah, but but actually you don't have to do it. So I just describe this one. So there's a notion of strongest spanner in combinatorics, maybe. So, so so the definition of strongest spanner is. So don't worry about the notion details, detailed notion, but just I, I, I'm just trying to read the sentence here. The size of any k family cannot exceed the, sam the sum of k largest 15 numbers for all k. And the, the modularization, what we have seen before, the, the, the definition is like this. The sum of k largest values in f cannot exceed the sum of k largest values in g for all k. So, so they have very similar definition. I mean, look. So once you realize that they look very similar, then then the proof is just based on uh, finding the similarity between two notions. And then if I use the property of strongness boner, then this inequality is almost uh, almost trivial. So so once the, the 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 main I mean the key idea is just finding the similarity of those two definition. Then the modularization implies the entropy inequality. So we have. A, the theorem too. Okay, so I just skip this one. Okay, so and then I'm I'm just now it's like I I want to mention some applications. Uh, so if we have a lower bound of the entropy of sum, then for the Shannon entropy case as well, then for the independent uniform distribution over some finite set A, a and B. Then uh, the entropy power of x plus y is greater than or equal to entropy power of x plus entropy power of y minus one. <coughs> so if I, if we choose the nx entropy power of x as in this way, so exponent should be two. So so actually uh, we have no reasonable uh, reason. I mean we have no reason to choose the exponent as two. Actually we have no. Uh, idea uh, why ha we have to choose two uh, and also this theorem three is actually false if x and y are not uniform so if we, if we choose Bernoulli uh, p very small we can find some counter example as well okay but uh, yes yeah, so, so, and and then yeah I have to mention this one I, I have to go back this one as well again so so we have we, we can we actually have to choose exponent 2 uh, actually based on the tau's results. So tau actually found some asymptotically sharp result then if we plug in some some any constant c then it, it just recover uh, it, it just recovered c should be 2. I will, I will explain this part uh, for the next slide as well. Okay so this is the so this one is called discrete entropy power inequality for uniform distribution in the integer case. And also uh, for the uniform case, this is just simple computation results. So lower bound uh, for the entropy gap, thus comparing the sum and the original. Then uh, uniform case, the constant can be improved half. So I mean, just this is just because of we choose the uniform. So it's Yes. Okay, so that's the another application. Okay, so why why the exponent should be two? So so tau trans tau he proved that the entropy gap should be always greater than or equal to half times log two minus some correction term. Then uh, let's say if I if we choose the entropy power as a e to the power of c h x and c is between 0 and 2 and then if I just assume that entropy power inequality 
has this kind of this form, so something like discrete sums and inequality, so just by mimicking, so entropy power of sum and each one minus some constant. And then, uh, then if I assume the x and y are iid, then uh, I can just reformulate it as an entropy gap formulation, then it will have uh, the lower bound as 1 over c times log 2 minus some correction term. So, but Tower's result is the sharp, so it's a tight result. So that should that implies that uh, one. Of, uh, so so if c is between zero and two, this constant one over c log two is always always greater than half log two. So that means uh, it violates the tight result. So so c c c cannot be less than two. And and similarly, if c is greater than two the inequality just reverse and because this one is the tight then that implies this if c is greater than 2 this is just loose bound so so that means we have to choose c equal 2 so that's the one reason to find uh, when we find the discrete entropy power inequality uh, we have to choose c equal 2 for the integer case and also another application is if we choose r equal infinite, we can say something about the literal dog for the problem. I mean something. Simple. So, so the the main thing is we can find the explicit uh, maximizer of the probability. So, so literal dog for the problem. The original question is like like this. If we have some x i as a Bernoulli half, so it's just uniform on two two point set. And then, uh, if we choose some constant, any constant. Uh, of any constant of integer, then a i x i, the sum of a i x i. Then what is the question is what is the maximal probability of this kind of linear combination of random variable? Then the Erdos, his answer is that this one is, I mean, the maximizer is achieved when all constants are the same, I mean the one. So the ex extreme case is just constants equal one case. And, and the proof is only for the Bernoulli case, Bernoulli half case. But uh, we can extend some, this, some kind of this argument to the something more general case. So if we use this entropy inequality, and if we take R goes to infinite, and also uh, the notion of by using the notion of rearrangement a i x i plus is the same as x i plus so the constant just vanishes so the very very similarly uh, the maximizer ex extreme case is just achieved by the constant equal one so if x i's are uh, well shaped I mean well shaped means they should be uh, distributed on some conjective integer. So, so after the rearrangement, if, if, if xi is the same as the xi plus, then I can say, I can find the ext extremizer correctly. So, so this, so for the trying, uh, square regular case, this is true. So for any type of something like a Bernoulli or even though they have more and more probability masses, if they, if they are uh, square regular shape, then the extre extreme case is just the constant equal one. So it, it's, it's, it's not actually trivial, I think, yes, to find the extremizer. Okay, so that's the one application. Another application to the little offer problem. So, so when we take R goes to infinite. Okay, so, so that's it. So, that's it. So, so this is the summary. So, so I just reviewed the entropy power inequality in a continuous setting. That's the actually the uh, real motivation of this work. And then I presented some entropy inequalities of sum and 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 also the 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 same type of the entropy power inequality is also available. I mean, the same yeah is available for the uniform distributions. Uh, and for the integer, but uh, another question is, 
can we extend the entropy power inequality to the integer, integer lattice case? But, uh, but when, we do s uh, when we work on this kind of problem for the more dimension case, then, but the still uh, the minimizer, I mean, lower bound of the entropy is the same as the one dimensional case. Even though we have a high dimension, we, j we can just rearrange every point mass into one line. Then it's just the lower bound case. So, so we can also so we can also find some entropy power inequality for the Zn case as well, but integer lattice, and also and and also yes, and also the exponent two is a re reasonable case based on the Tau's result, and also it implies some Cauchy Davenport and some explicit answer of little Doppler problem, and we are just finalizing the draft, so it will be. Uh, in public very soon. So that's it. Thanks so much. <laughs>